Hi, YouTubers. I'm back again. I want to continue the lesson we were talking about last Friday about the conscious mind. I'm just going to read a little bit where I left off. It says, the true student will make the time each day to practice these techniques. And the techniques were um, given the conscious mind. That's the, the conscious mind is the one that the action that gets us in trouble or makes us move to a higher level. But it's like he is he or she is the one that's going to get in trouble and get arrested or what. You're in the physical body. He gets command from the super, the super conscious. It's telling the conscious mind what to do. So it says a true student will make the time each day to practice these techniques. As they do so, they will find satisfaction and happiness in their progress and a never-before-known joy from within. They find a peace within themselves and understanding for their reason and purpose for being in the world at this particular time. Um, a good example of that for me is... Um, Today I had a, oh, a busy, busy day. My son drove me to a, a different MS clinic and I saw about three doctors at the same time. And they were giving me many, many commands. Push, pull, hold your arms up like this, touch your nose, do all, oh, a lot of them. They just poking and pulling. And I had to, you know, take the message from my super conscious mind to my conscious mind to do what they asked me to do. And during the examination, it was a long time, but I, I the conscious mind, Mary, wanted to just give up and I and they had me walking down the hall, turn around, tap your toes and Walk on your toes, walk on your heel, and and I just didn't even know that I couldn't do that kind of stuff. I, I said, what's wrong with me? Are y'all telling me to do stuff I ain't supposed to? It didn't seem, I don't ever remember walking on my toes or my heel. No, but anyway, they, I, I obeyed. I made myself do what they asked me to do. So that I believe that's what I'm, I'm seeing that. You know what it said, they they find a peace within themselves and understanding for their reason and purpose for being in the world at this particular time. So, I was able to do it, and then I was waiting for the valet, uh, we were waiting for the valet to come, and in my mind, I said, well, it's going to be hot out here, where am I going to sit? You know, trying to wear it and waiting on the valet, but... I went, we went on out there and sat, and it was so cool out there. I don't know if I, that was the weirdest thing to be outside, and it's cool. So, but anyway, that's what I'm talking about the peace. And I don't know if, if I was creating that in my mind or what. Or the, the condition, outside condition, was great. I could have just sat there and relaxed for a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm. I'm I'm practicing these techniques and it, it works. It says most everyone will find these techniques to their liking. When you practice them, you will appreciate your teacher more and more. You know who the teach well, the teacher was in the class and I'm the reader, so I'm not a teacher. It says your teacher will aid you in finding your inner voice of direction. And you will find your source of spiritual knowledge has multiplied. Okay. In the beginning of our creation, with all the universal laws set into motion, the soul, 
was brought into being as a way for I am. This is capital I, capital A M. For I am to experience in the animal body. This afforded man a vehicle to use in the physical existence for the learning and growth of the soul, for the purpose of achieving compatibility with its creator. Hmm. Therefore, we all have the potential to become creators also. The creation which began many eons ago continues its existence and creation is occurring now. We learn in the study of science that nothing is ever completely made new or destroyed, only changed in appearance and structure. Once a creation is manifested in the physical, it begins to deteriorate. From the first drop of rain that falls on a new house to the first scratch on your new car or the first ray of sunlight that strikes the car paint. The process of deterioration, corrosion and rotting has begun. With change, growth, success, learning, development and illumination which are permanent and eternal. The power of the mind is so great that we can create and live our fondest dreams. Thought control by intelligence is their most powerful thing in the universe. I read that and I think about Albert Einstein and all those geniuses that were uh, working on that formula at the time because I watched a documentary about Albert Einstein and his mind and all of those scientists that were working with him you know it, it was a race to come up with this formula I guess it was something that would about matter and changing matter into something else. And these people were geniuses. I, I just couldn't understand it, but it was a, an, a good documentary. But thought control by intelligence is the most powerful thing in the universe. So what about thought that is not controlled by intelligence? Hmm, because you think about Hitler and his plan and how he hated people. So hate and love, uh, which one is the most powerful? Hmm. They have to be equal. Because they cut the other, you know, the flip side of a coin. But, no, 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 think about it. Light dispels the darkness. I don't care, you think about it, when you in a, a dark pitch black room and one pinhole of light coming in the room, it lights up the room. Now you could be in a room that's light and all, I mean just a light everywhere you see and you put one pinhole of darkness, you don't even, you wouldn't even see the darkness. So light is more powerful than darkness and love has to be more powerful than uh hate okay we're looking good with time if the conscious mind working with the physical body ignores the subconscious mind often your thoughts will be engrossed in limited earthly material happenings but causing your conscious Thoughts to work in harmony with the subconscious and superconscious mind, the learning gain will become a permanent part of self. This kind of learning, which spans eternity, would be of more benefit than all the material worth you can gain in this lifetime. Material wealth can accomplish needs to have an idea and purpose. 
Your existence needs to be needs to have an idea and purpose. Hmm. Okay, idea and purpose. My existence. Hmm. Wonder what is my idea and purpose. God, I'm sixty-five years old and still. Uh yeah, yeah. I can kind of. Yeah, my purpose. I can kind of figure out a little bit because the I can be around people and you know just walking up and being cordial and smiling and say how you doing and genuinely seeing it. You know, because their spirit can can know my spirit. So having that that spirit and. I don't know. The atmosphere in the room is a, so much better. That's that's the way I see it. But you know, you have to remember to become this thing. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what else it says. Mm -hmm. Okay. You live in a material world. You live in a material world. You are a soul living in a vehicle called a physical body. You are a soul. You are not a body. The body is a means of experiencing while you are in this material world. The world can be seen as a schoolroom. Yeah, we talked about. Lifetimes are the years of study. The different grades where learning lessons occur. Reincarnation can be likened unto a jigsaw puzzle. With each lifetime, opportunities are bound to be put pieces. Wait a minute, wait again. With each lifetime, opportunities are bound to put pieces of the puzzle into place. Really? You choose a piece of the pieces you will place in each lifetime. You choose the conditions of your schoolroom. Wait a minute. You choose the conditions of your incarnation based upon the potential for learning particular lessons in the earthly classroom. Wow. With with as with physical schooling when the lessons are one grade or missed it's necessary to repeat instructions so progression in the grade level can occur reincarnation is similar to this when opportunities for learning are overlooked or ignored in one lifetime similar opportunities will arise at another time until the desired lessons are understood and made a permanent part of self. So, I can't imagine how many lifetimes I've had, but each lifetime, I'm learning a lesson. And even if I don't get it right in this lifetime, I could get it right in another lifetime. But how would I remember what I'm supposed to be learning? Wow, man. But you know what? <laughs> I have... I don't care what I'm doing. Take for example, I'm in my upholstery shop. I could have... 50 pillows I need to make. Cut them out, sew them, stuff them, put zippers and all of that. I can have 50 and be a tiring process. I can have three stores and help me with the job. I can instruct them how to do it and we'll do it. And we are nine times out of ten doing it the hard way. And then we can get down to pillar number 46. And it'll just dawn on us, duh, we doing it the wrong way. Let's do it this way and make it easy. And you just, I say to myself, well, it would be nice if we had known to do this in the beginning. And believe it or not, the next year or two years, we'll have an order for the same kind of pillars. 
the key is to remember how to do it. And I remember one time I was at the grocery store. I think I said this before. But, uh, you know, when you're trying to separate your basket so you can shop, and they be just locked up in it. Oh, one day I was fighting and struggling trying to get a basket out. And this older lady, because I was in my, I was about 50 when I was doing this, trying to get a basket loose. I'm just shaking and pulling. This old lady come up and just lift the handle up and pull the basket out. I said, how'd you do that? And she showed me. She said, uh, lady, if things are hard, you are doing it the wrong way. And I just said, ah. I was dumbfounded. And then the little old lady just walked away. I said, well, what? But I'll never forget that. If it's hard, if life is hard, you're doing it the wrong way. If if you're doing, if whatever you're doing, if it's hard, you're doing it the wrong way. So I believe that's what this talking about and reincarnation in different lives. A lot of times, uh, some of us, and I, me included, and it's okay if you do learn everything at that your dying moment. You get ready to take your last breath, and you say, "Ah, aha, I know now. I know how to do this." And surely the universe or something will come and help us in the next lifetime to remember. I believe it will because I have been blessed with a memory that most people don't have. And my sisters sometimes say, how do you remember all those things? But it's things that happened in my early life. I could tell her some things that were happening and we both were in the same room and allegedly watching the same event. But she doesn't remember what I remember. So from her point of view, she wasn't looking at what I saw. So everybody's memory is different. Even, you know, when it's a, a crime scene and they uh, interrogating witnesses Everybody has a different story, so, but the key is to remember. I think that's the main thing. Carry your memory with you from each lifetime. And the memory, I think the process of memory is paying attention to what's going on. Feel what's going on. Smell what's going on. And and that won't leave you as long as you have your five senses. Because I was like three years old. And I remember my papa. He used to sit on the porch and spit. Just spit tobacco. And every time he would spit, I'd spit. I couldn't figure out why my spit wouldn't be brown. And I, I just, that really bothered me. And my brother, he's about seven and seven years older than I am. He said, how could you remember Papa spitting? I said, I just remember. I remember how he smelled. And it's just different things. And these are people that were close to me. And my grandmother, I don't remember too much about her because she was always mean. And they they didn't call us by name. We were always girl and boy, a gal and boy. They I don't even think they knew what our name was. Kind of like in that movie, uh, uh, bird, but the birds and they were blind. And you know that movie. I can't even think of the name of. It, but they they had these two children and a girl and a boy. And that's what their name was, girl and boy. And that's what our names were coming up. My mother would call our names, but the grand folks, uh, grand people, and aunties, they you come here, gal, gal. I told you <laughs> so, and and 
when my sister and we were all together, I, they say they say you gals, and so we all would come and run it. But I don't know. The key to anything is to remember and be in touch and feel the moment. When you feel the moment, your sensations and you're activating your senses. So that's what's important for us to remember stuff. But anyway, I'm coming up on 20-something minutes. So this is the end of our little lesson for today. And we'll We'll talk again next week, okay? Have a good weekend. Bye.